Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are going to create a custom projectile entirely in blueprints. Uh, what we're looking at here is the blueprint third person project. I'm going to hop in and play and show you what it is we're going to create. We're going to create a flaming chair that you can shoot at people because flaming chairs are awesome, aren't they? So there we go. That's what we're going to create together here. And let me escape and minimize that. And here we are with a brand new fresh third person blueprint template map. Now you can use any project you want, but if you want to follow along and have a flaming chair that you can shoot, I suggest that you use the Blueprint Third Person project and make sure that starter content is enabled. And with that, let's get started. Uh, in the content browser, click the Add New button and go up to Blueprint Class, go ahead and select that. And in the Pick a Parent class, we're going to select an actor. We're going to make this an actor. And let's call this Blueprint uh, Flaming Chair. Then go ahead and double click on it to open it up. That will open the Blueprint Editor, and it will open to the Viewport tab, allowing us to look at all the components that we can add. So let's start adding some components. Uh, in the upper left, under the Components window, click the Add Component button. And first thing we're going to add is a collision. So if I type in Collision, we get a couple options here. Traditionally, you would use a sphere collision for your rounded bullets or a capsule for your uh, machine gun bullets or whatever. For us, we're going to use a box collision because we, we wanted something custom, so let's go ahead and use a box collision. I'm going to call this uh, collision. And with that, uh, we're going to hop over to the details panel here. For the collision presets, we're going to make a change here. It's currently set to overlap all dynamic. We're going to click this drop down and make it block all dynamic because it is our collision. And we're going to add another component. We're going to add a static mesh. So let's go ahead and search for and add static mesh. I'm going to call this uh, chair. And for our chair here, let's go to the details panel and under static mesh, click this drop down and search for chair. So there's our SM chair. And it's a little bit bigger than our collision, so I'm just going to drag it down a little bit. Uh, then I'm going to hop back up to our collision here. And I'm going to scale up the Z on our collision here just by dragging this over. And maybe the Y too, like so, something like this. And probably could do the Y a little bit more, or the X actually. There we go. Something like that so it'll encapsulate our chair. I'm gonna hop back to the chair and move it down so that it fits inside our box. Looks good to me, good enough. Uh, next thing we're gonna add, click the Add Component and search for a particle system. So go ahead and select that. And this is gonna be called Fire. Going to hop over to the details panel under particles and template. We're going to drop, click this drop down here and select uh, fire. Look at that, our chair is already on fire. Uh, one thing that we need to do, go back to the components panel over here, grab our fire, left click on it, and drag and drop it on our chair. So wherever our chair moves, our fire moves with it, which is what we want. And let's add another component here. Let's click the add component button. And we need to add a projectile movement projectile movement component. And the projectile com movement component is very handy because it includes a lot of stuff that will handle all of the uh, functionality of a projectile, such as speed and bounciness and all kinds of other things. We're not going to change all of these or go through all of these together, but we do need this component. We're going to make a couple changes on them. Uh, so the first, inside the details panel, we're going to head down to the velocity section here. Under the X, we're going to change this to about uh, 200, move it along the X in 200 uh, units. So that is, if you go to the side view here, you can see our X, we're going to move it in this direction, 200 units initially. And our initial speed, let's bump this up, uh, let's go ahead and set this to 2000, so that's going 2000 units per second. And for fun, let's go to and make sure that it bounces. Should bounce. Yes, this chair should bounce. Uh, one other thing, actually, let's go back to our chair really quickly. Let's select our chair. And let's, inside the viewport here, let's hit E. We're going to rotate our chair just a little bit so it's launched like that. And let's move it up just a little bit. I think that's good. Good enough. So it's going to launch like that when we launch it. The other thing we're going to do, we're going to go back up to it as the components and add one more component. We're going to add a rotating movement component. Rotating movement component. This is a really handy thing because now with this, we can have this chair continually rotate uh, in a direction. So with that, let's select our rotating movement component 
and we want to rotate it. Uh, let's rotate it along. Let's zero out the yaw. Let's zero that out. And for the pitch, we're going to make this uh, 45 degrees. Now, if we hit simulate, whoa, our track was flying off, but you can kind of see it rotating. We may want to change our uh, projectile movement speed a little bit. Our initial speed is 2,000. Let's actually bump that down. That was a little too fast for a chair. So let's go ahead and bump that down to, say, 1,200. And let's pull back a little bit and simulate again. Boom. There we go. Look at it. It's rotating. That is cool. I'm happy with that. Uh, with that, let's see. I think that is all we need to do for our flaming chair. Let's compile and save. Uh, let's, well, you know what? There's one other thing we could do. Let's go to our projectile movement here. And if we scroll all the way down to the bottom in the details panel, we have a couple options. We have on projectile bounce and on projectile stop. So if we were to, I'm going to demonstrate this really quickly. If we were to go back to our level here and just drag in a chair. So if I just drag and drop in a chair here and I move this up and I'm going to go to simulate actually and simulate this, it will launch our chair. However, when it stops, look what happens. It keeps rotating in place, which isn't cool. So I'm going to stop and go back to our blueprint here and select our projectile movement. And when it stops project, and when the projectile stops moving, we're going to stop the rotation. So I'm going to click this add button here and it's going to give me a new node on our graph, which is where we provide all the scripted functionality for our blueprint. So what we want to do is grab our rotating movement component here. I'm going to hold control and drag that in. And then what we're going to do is drag, left click and drag off the rotating movement component. And we're going to set uh, the rotation. The rotation rate is what we want to set. So with that, we're just going to left click and drag and connect it like so. And all we're going to do is leave this as zero because we want to stop rotating. Uh, just for fun, Let's actually hold control and drag in our collision as well. And left click and drag off of this. And let's say set uh, physics simulate sets. Yeah, there we go. Set simulate physics. And let's connect this to this. And our new value is going to be true. So once we stop uh, moving, we're going to stop our rotation. But then we're going to set our chair to be a physics object. So let's compile and save and hop over to the editor here. Let's see if this is working. Find our chair. Let's simulate. Boom, 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 boom. And yes, it looks like it's a physics object. Our collision is kind of bumping up against the wall here. But I think that's good. Let's go ahead and stop. Last bit of business we need to do is allow our character to actually launch this chair. So what we're going to do, let's find our character blueprint that is being used for this. There's a couple different ways we could do this. Uh, for our in, for our instance, we're using the third-person blueprint uh, template, so it's going to be inside the blueprints folder uh, right here. Our third-person character. Another way you can get to this: if you go to settings and world settings, uh, you can see that we're using the third-person game mode. If I browse to this, which is actually right here in the same folder, but if I double-click on open this, you can see the default pawn class that is being used. Uh, your character may be different if you're using a different project, but for us, we're using the third-person character. But this will allow you to browse to whatever character is being used as the default pawn class. Just a note, just to help you find it if you can't find it. So let's go ahead and open up the third-person character blueprint. I'm going to scroll down a little bit by holding the right mouse button and dragging in our graph here. This script pertains to our character movement. We're not going to worry about any of this because uh, our character can run around and jump and everything right now, but it can't shoot. So we're going to add that functionality. I'm going to right click and search for left mouse button because this is typically the button used to fire stuff in games. So left mouse button and we have a pressed and released. We're only going to worry about the pressed. We're going to right click again and search for spawn, spawn actor actor from class. So spawn actor from class is the one that we want. And we're going to connect the pressed to the in here, like so. And the class that we're going to spawn is our flaming chair. So I'm going to start typing in flaming and I get our flaming chair option. And it's asking for a transform to spawn it, the location in world space where to spawn it. Uh, to get that, we're going to right click and search for get actor location. 
So get the actor location, which is our player character. We're also going to get the uh, controller rotation. So if we search for get control rotation, so get control re rotation, uh, this is the rotation of our mouse as we move it in our game. So we want to get that rotation and see which way we are aiming. So now that we have both of those, we can right click and say make transform because this is asking for a transform. And you can see uh, that we have the location and rotation. We could plug both of these in right now and connect this to the transform. However, what would happen is we would spawn the flaming chair right inside of our player character, and we don't want that. So what we're going to do, let's actually, we can connect this right now. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to get the, from the ro control rotation, we're going to get the forward vector of that. So get which way is forward. Uh, yeah, that's right there. Get the forward vector. And we're going to multiply this by a vector. So let's go ahead, or by a float. Let's hit the uh, multiplication key there. And we're going to multiply it by a float. And let's just say uh, 800. And then what we're going to do is let's drag off our get actor location here and add a plus sign, vector plus vector, like so. And connect this to this and this to this and our rotation to this. There we go. Let's compile and save. And let's play in the editor and see if that works. Let's make sure we're not on simulate first. So let's play. So there we go. We're launching our chair from our character. And it is a physics object now once it stops rotating. So this was a little bit longer of a video, but it's a little bit cooler, I think, than a traditional projectile. Hope you guys enjoyed it and learned something, and thanks for watching.